This is part two of nomenclature. We'll be naming uh, ternary compounds, which are nothing more than salts, ionic compounds, that are now having a polyatomic ion involved. Up to this point, we've been dealing with binary compounds like sodium and fluorine. With a transfer of electrons, we have the F with the negative by gaining the electron because it's more electronegative, and the sodium losing and becoming stable, and the attractive forces. But we've been dealing with just two different elements. Now we're going to be dealing with these polyatomic ions, okay, that we have already seen in table E of our reference table. So if we look at table E, all right, and I have it here somewhere, table E is uh, a table that gives over polyatomic ions, and some are positive, that's the coordinate covalent bond we've talked about there, and most are negative, and these are clusters of nonmetals that need an electron to make their covalent bonding work within their particle. But this cluster, this polyatomic ion, is still an ion and it will undergo ionic bonding. And the naming system is very simple. We're going to take the positive part of our compound and we're going to name that like we did with binary compounds. We're not going to add IDE, we're just going to add the ending name of the polyatomic ion. Just like before, we're not going to mention how many of each of these is needed, just the actual name. However, the small little caveat there is that we're going to have to think about the elements who are in front that have multiple positive charges and use the stock system where it applies. So let's get started. So let's go back and name these compounds. And of course, there's two skills. We have to make a chemical formula from the name, and we have to also create a name from a chemical formula. So sodium oxalate. All right, so we look at sodium, and we know that sodium likes to become positive 1. And if I don't know that, we go to the reference table, and we can look up the right-hand corner for sodium. It'll show only this positive, which means it only becomes positive 1. Oxalate, okay, so we take oxalate is the second part of this compound, and you're going to say, what the heck is an oxalate? And that's, my friends, another name for table E. I call table E the what the heck is that table. There it is. What the heck is an oxalate? I've never seen it. It doesn't look familiar to me. So what we do is we look for it on the periodic table. So we look for oxalate. And it is going to be C2, okay, O4. And it's right here. All right, easy for me to find. And this is... Uh, our polyatomic ion. Notice it's a cluster of nonmetals needing two electrons to make this work. So go back to our sh worksheet, okay, um, and we are going to use that. So uh, again, I'm using my ions over here. I'm going to do my work for So C2, all right, C2, make sure I'm in the right colors here, C2O4, negative 2. Okay, now, I'm going to figure out, just like I did before with the binary compounds, what arrangement of these ions, how many of each of these ions I need to make them electrically neutral. This is positive 1. This is negative 2. So I need two of these positive ones for every one of these. So my formula is Na2, two positive sodiums, for every one of these oxalate polyatomic ions, and there's my compound. Notice there's no charges in my compound because it's electrically neutral. All right, potassium phosphate. Potassium is K+. plus. We know it's also an alkali metal in the same family of sodium, so they only become 1 or plus 1. Again, we can should know where to look to find them. And then we have this phosphate. Notice it's not an IDE thing. It's a phosphate. What the heck is a phosphate? So we're going to have to go to the what the heck is that table. Okay, maybe. Maybe if I can get it back. All right, there we go. So we go, so we go back to the what the heck is that table. And I see that a phosphate is PO4 negative 3. It's a cluster of a phosphorus and four oxygens needing three electrons to make this arrangement work. All right, so back to where we were. All right, so our phosphate is PO4, that cluster, 
negative 3. Don't lose sight that this is a cluster. This cluster of nonmetals is completely bonding covalently, needing 3 electrons to make that work from the environment, so it gains 3. So this is like a F in the sense that it's a particle, except this particle has bonds, okay, between the O's, and the whole thing is negative 3 to make it work. Okay, so in any case, if this is negative 3 collectively, and this is plus 1, if you want to crisscross, we can notice that we need 3 K's, and we have 1 phosphorus. So I write K3PO4. Okay, and again, for those that didn't know what I just did there, crisscrossing is takes this charge, the absolute value, and bring it down here, that'd be 3. This is 1 plus is 1, and crisscross it here, meaning you need 3 K's for every 1 phosphorus, a phosphate, a, multi a polyatomic ion. We don't have to write a 1 here because writing that implies 1. Okay, and if you're going to do the crisscross method to get neutral charges, throughout your molecule, you should know that you need to reduce to lowest terms if you do that because remember, most of these are ionic compounds and these ionic compounds, okay, are just the lowest ratio of ions in a crystal. All right, zinc hydroxide. Okay, so we know that zinc is plus two. And if you don't, you're gonna have to pull out your reference table, okay? You're gonna have to go and look at your uh, reference table in terms of what these charges become, uh, or what they can become, become to become stable. Zinc, okay, only becomes plus two. For those in other courses, without these charges, you should know that zinc, okay, likes to become plus two because it's going to lose the S electrons, not the Ds. Okay, this far down into it, the D sublevels actually shield the S, and the S is farther away called inversion. In any case, for those that are not in that kind of a scenario, you can see that zinc is plus two. Only choice there. So let's go back. All right, hydroxide. Okay, well hydroxide, my friends, is a polyatomic ion. I mean, so Mr. Grotsky, it ends in IDE, so that must be hydrogen. Well, that'd be hydride. Okay, hydride is talking about hydrogen. Okay, Hydroxide, even though it's got an IDE, that's part of the polyatomic name, so you're going to have to check, not sure, is OH minus 1. I'm getting that right off the what the heck is that table, table E. Okay. Now, I've noticed this arrangement. Hydroxide is negative 1. Zinc is plus 2. So to make this work, electrostatically be 0, I need two hydroxides. So you might write this, zinc, hydroxide, and I need 2. And if you did do that, okay, if you did do that, you would be wrong because you just changed the chemical formula. You have one zinc, one oxygen, and now two H's. By putting this two here, you're not saying you have two of this cluster. You have two hydrogens. And it should be clear to you that if I was to break this down, this is a zinc plus two. And guess what? two hydroxides that are actually involved in this crystal not one oxygen and two H's as you would be as it would represent if you just put this two here so what we're gonna have to do to re report that we have in fact two hydroxide polyatomic ions and one and one zinc plus two is we're gonna need to have parentheses without the parentheses that would have been wrong now with the parentheses what you're saying is you have two of these ions in here. And my friends, that's what you're going to need. All right? So that's the formula. Okay. So pretty simple stuff so far. Now, what if we run into the stock system again? Okay, so let's go back here. And now we have lead 4 sulfate. What does this mean again? Well, lead has a couple of different charges it can become. It can become plus 2 or plus 4. I need to go back to the to the reference table, uh, the periodic table, okay, maybe. And let's look at lead. Okay, lead, plumbum is the um, name for lead. In turn, it's Latin name. Okay, the plumbing, plumbum was the plumbing in, um, I can get there. 
right there. It was the actually plumbing in um, uh, Rome. They had lead pipes, low melting point, easy to form. Okay. Any case, look at the two choices. Unlike the ones we've done previously that only had one choice, this has got two. So which lead are we working with, plus two or plus four? So the stock system with that Roman numeral suggests we should be using which one? Plus four. It's telling us. Why is it telling us? Because lead has two choices, plus two or plus four. Do not think that this is the fourth choice. In this case, you only have two choices. It's telling you exactly which charge we're working with. So it's plus four. Sulfate, what the heck is that? Well, I go to the what the heck is that table, table E, and I pick out my sulfate ion, which is negative two. And if you didn't know where I got that, I got it from the same place I got all of these. Now, I'm trying to make this electrostatically neutral. This is negative two. This is positive four. Hmm, I'm gonna need two of these to match this. So it's gonna be PB SO4. And because I need two sulfates to give me my plus four, I'm going to throw a two here. So two of everything inside. Without the parentheses, none of this makes any sense. Now, if you crisscrossed, you would put a two down here and a four for this guy. Remember, it's the absolute value. And a two to four becomes a one to two ratio when you reduce. Okay, Remember, you're going to have to reduce. These are ionic compounds lowest ratio of their ions in a crystal lattice that's repeating okay so you get the idea let's do the next one number five this one seems strange you look at this one say ammonium I don't see any element called ammonium you're right there's a polyatomic ion named ammonium from table what the heck is that and it's an NH4 plus that's that uh, that's that ammonia that actually absorbed the proton to make that polyatomic ion. Carbonate, what the heck is that? Well, that's a negative polyatomic ion. And as I said previously on Sunday's lecture, or lecture last week, you can have ionic compounds that don't have any metals. This is a cluster of nonmetals, and this is a cluster of nonmetals. And gosh darn it, they're going to they're gonna attract because of differences of charge. So that's an ionic bond. It doesn't have to be a metal nonmetal. Any case, this is negative two, this is plus one. So you're going to need two of these ammonium ions, so uh, look at this, there's my two, for every one carbonate to get electrical neutral. Or you can crisscross, two to one, and there it is, two of these to one. Okay, so that's the skill, and it doesn't get any harder or any easier than that, that's it, of taking the chemical name and making it into a uh, formula, understanding that if I have an element that has more than one choice, in terms of its positive the oxidation states, I need to report that or I need to use that in this case. Okay, now in number six, dimercury, we don't have that polyatomic ion anymore and we don't have manganate in our table anymore. Okay, let's go down quickly and do a couple of the reverse skills. Taking the formula, let's make it into a name. Okay, ooh, that doesn't look cool at all. It's not binary. I don't like that. Ooh, what the heck is that? Well, split it. you got to take what's positive. I'm going to split it, and let's make this a little bigger. All right. So I'm going to increase this a little bit. Okay. And move that across. And so I'm going to split this. This is the positive side. This is the negative side. Okay. Well, K likes to become, well, K is in front. That's the what? That's the potassium okay and HCO3 what the heck is that all well, my friends in chemistry you see a cluster of nonmetals not sure what it is I'm telling you it's probably going to be a polyatomic ion okay let's make it smaller so we can see so we had um, HCO3 and there it is. It's negative one, which makes sense. K was plus one. This whole cluster is negative one. And the name is hydrogen carbonate. So potassium, hydrogen, carbonate. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. Okay. I don't say how many O's. I don't care how many carbonates. It's just what you have. This is the positive element 
or in the last case, it could be a, a, a polyatomic ion. So the name of the guy that making it, or gal, if I'm being sexist, okay, that's positive in front, and the negative ion is at the end. Okay, I'm going to split this one. Okay, I notice this is a cluster. Okay, I know this is cluster. Okay, and I know this is iron. And I know this from table E, or what the heck is that, is the nitrate ion. So it's ion nitrate. Unfortunately, if I was to put this as written, I'd get it wrong because you have to know which elements have mo more than one choice. Potassium is an alkali metal. If you look it up on the table, it only makes one choice, plus one. Iron being transitional, okay, unfilled Ds, they have more than one choice. Iron can be plus two or plus three. So which one do I have? I have to figure it out. Here's how I do it. I know that nitrate's negative one. That cluster is negative one from table E. I know that there's two of them. So it's negative two overall. This bottom numbers are my overall numbers. They have to equal zero. So this should be positive two. And since there's only one iron, it's positive two. So this is iron to Roman numeral two nitrate to tell the people that I'm dealing with iron in the plus two state. Okay, and that's really the hardest ones there. Okay, there's nothing any harder than that. All right, so let's do one more. Ooh, nine looks nasty. I don't think so. There's clusters of nonmetals. Look them up. This is the ammonium ion, which is plus one. This is a chromate ion. Look it up at table E. It's negative two. You probably could have guessed that because you need two of these. So what's the name of the ion in front that's positive? That's the ammonium ion. And this is the chromate ion. It's just that simple. The hardest part is recognizing which metals in front have multiple charges or which elements. Because you can have some non-metals named this way, as you can see. Okay, so by going through this, this entire ditto, or these worksheets, you will learn very quickly who has multiples. I bet right now, if we went to this side, who's going to have multiples? Sodium, alkali metal, only one choice. Calcium, alkaline earth, plus two only. Copper, that's transitional, plus one, plus two. That's the one that you're going to need a stock system for. Zinc, although it's not a transitional, these are filled, it only becomes plus two. Lead has a couple of choices. Even though it's not really transitional, it does have a couple of choices. Okay, and nickel transitional does. So by going through this, you'd recognize this. Okay, good luck.